You ready to <clears throat> a simple smiley face till like um, <clears throat> 3D object you can throw on your website, you can throw it on your latest music video, you can throw it on a little side part of your Twitch channel, whatever it may be. I'm sure it'll look pretty cool. So let's just dive straight on in. Okay, so getting started, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and delete everything per usual. And let's just set it up for our EV render system. So that's ambient inclusion, bloom, screen space reflections. And in order to get this to loop, let's head over by the edit tab and click on preferences, open up animation, make sure your default interpolation is set to linear and we're good to go. Now, <clears throat> the next step is we're going to spawn some objects. So press shift in a, and then bring in a cylinder. This is pretty much going to be the base of our smiley face. Now let's go ahead and press S and Z and let's scale it down to the diameter that you kind of feel is right. For me, I think, let me check, just to help you out, my scale was 0 0.67. So the way I pop that open is I press N, you can see the scale for the dimensions here. But see what you like, then press R and Z. Oops, R and Z, no, R and X, 90 which will flip it onto this like nicer kind of vibe. Now, what you'll do in the next step here is, let's just go ahead and press G and Z and bring it up a little bit. Now let's press tab to enter edit mode. Now edit mode is how you kind of do some modeling. If anyone is really into modeling here, you'll be spending a lot of time in edit mode, but we're gonna keep this really simple and really light. So, what we need to do is switch over to faces. So if you go look, it's the last selection. You click this face and the other face, hold down shift and click. Then we're gonna press I to inset, control I, I mean. And we're gonna go ahead, oops. Oh, we're just gonna press I, my fault, to inset. And what we're doing here is we're insetting, we're just gonna bring it in a little bit do it again, bring it in. There you go. Once you have that, you can kind of kind of get the gist of what we're about to do here. So the next thing is we need to kind of extrude a section of this. So hold down Alt and then click on that middle kind of section. Shift and Alt. Oops. Hold on Alt again. Shift and Alt again. So to recap, just make sure that was kind of fast. I held down Alt and Shift, and I clicked on one of the middle faces, kept holding down Shift, clicked on the other one, and that's how you select both. Now what you're gonna wanna do is press S, no, press E to extrude, then press S and Y, and you're just gonna pull it out a little bit. So that was E to extrude and S and Y, and you're just gonna pull it out. You want you can pull it out to your heart's content. I'm gonna pull mine out a little bit further than I typically did. And now you can kind of see we have a bit of our like pill slash coin functionality. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna to have to import an SVG. I'm gonna link a smiley face SVG and we're just gonna go ahead and drop it right on in. So for anyone that's wondering how that's done, if you don't have this add-on installed already, just type in SVG, import, export, scalable vector graphics, and you'll be on your way to the races. Now to bring it in, go over to import, SVG, head over to where you have your smiley face. And once you bring it in, let's scale it a bit, I press R and X again, 90. Make sure you make the geometry origin, so or geometry to origin, just center it. And now what you're pretty much doing here is, we just need to make sure it's centered and we're gonna do a bit of extruding as well. So go to the front. Right about here, it looks good. G and Y, just kind of bring it in. And then what you're gonna do, let me make mine a little bigger. Looks good. Then what you're gonna do, click on this 
green kind of line thing. Geometry, hold shift and extrude it a little bit. Right about there, it looks good for me. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to convert this to a mesh. So right click, convert, mesh. Okay, and once you have that converted to a mesh, you're gonna see some magic that we're gonna do next. So bring it in a little bit into the coin we have. Click onto the cylinder, and we're gonna do some Boolean magic. So click Boolean, make sure it's difference, object, your smiley face. Okay, you're like, nothing's happening. I'm gonna show you what to do next. So let's head over to our layer list and just go ahead and turn these off. So you're gonna click that filter and make sure you turn on disable and viewports and you have your render. And you can see now we have a bit of an extrusion. Cool. Now the next section that we're gonna do is the backside. Very, very simple as well. So I'm gonna call this backside rectangle. What you're gonna do is just scale it on the Z. So that's S and Z. Bring it down a little bit and scale on the Y, S and Y. Bring it down a little bit. And just make sure scale it on the X. I don't want it to be too big. Scale on the Z a little bit again. Bring it out G and Y. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same exact thing we just did but we're going to create another boolean and you're going to go ahead and make that backside rectangle and you're going to hide oh you're going to hide the rectangle so now you can kind of see we have some shapes going on here we have this backside and then if you want to pull it out a little bit we're doing some non-destructive editing right now pull it out a little bit just so it's not as deep into the coin or pill and you can see right now if you do material preview, you can see where it's dropping in. Look at that. You pretty much have your model done now at this point. So if you wanna run on and do any sort of material or whatnot, you're good to go. But for everyone that wants to stay and learn how to make it a little more psychedelic, we're about to drop right on into that. So make sure you save your file. Smile face tutorial. I spelled it a little wrong. Don't hunt me down. Just hide these booleans. We're gonna apply these soon, but we're just gonna set this up. So the next step is our materials. So I'm gonna head into the shading just because I've learned it will save everyone if you can see what I'm doing here. So let's go into shading. And we're gonna do a few fun things here. So we're gonna start with our base color. So shift A and type in color ramp. Connect this. I'm gonna show you a little trick I like to do to make quick psychedelic kind of vibes. Go to HSL, go far, turn this black color up, set it to like green, and set the other one to like, I don't know, purple. Bring in another one. Now you can kind of see we have a bit of a rainbow effect. And then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna bring in a bit of a layer weight on the facing. You can see it's looking a bit really trippy, not that great. Um, I like to bring in a mix node here, mix RGB, bring in that one and bring in a noise texture. Connect the noise textures to this one. Let's go ahead and also, if you have Node Wrangler, if you don't, we're gonna be using Node Wrangler here. So it's another add-on to install. Super useful, Node Wrangler, press Control T. Let's go ahead and connect that to the window from Texture Coordinate. You can see right now it's looking quite cool. Okay, so one thing that I also learned is set this to Linear Light. Shout out to Default Cube on this part. So Linear Light is a very kind of like nice, nice kind of setup. Let's just, and if you toggle it, you can kind of see stretch between the factor. I'm going to leave mine right about 0 0.4. And you can turn up the layer weight, you can turn down the layer weight. I'm going to put mine right about there. So 0 0.1. And then with the scale of the noise texture, I'm going to leave it a bit low. Okay. 
one, just one, I think is okay. I'm gonna turn up the detail. And we can turn the distortion up a little bit, maybe like around three. Looks good. Let's just do front. Let's just turn it a little bit. Okay, and now you're like, Micah, this looks, it looks cool, but it looks a little too crazy for my liking. So what we'll do is bring in just another mix RGB, connect it, and now you can kind of see as you change with the factor, it mutes it a little bit. If you want it to be any sort of color basis, you can go ahead and switch it. Uh, let's not mess with any of that stuff, actually. Let's just go ahead and make ours straight up a little bit of a darker color. Let's just leave it right about there. Okay. So I'm going to bring my color up actually a little bit. And then we're going to do a few things. So we're going to kind of be done with this section. Now we're going to play around with making it look a little bit more metallic. So you're going to turn up your metallic pretty high up there. Turn down your roughness by quite a bit. And you can kind of see from here we're getting some cool, some cool movement. Turn down the roughness a bit more. And you'll see, I think at this point we have a bit of our colors. You can turn down the factor a little bit more if you want. Um, now what you're gonna wanna do here, let's go back into our layout. I'm gonna go ahead and apply both of my Booleans. So like I said, this is the point of no return for anyone that pretty much is looking to come back to change their smiley face or the backside of this pill. So what you're gonna go ahead and just apply both, oops, both your Booleans. You can delete both of these rectangles. And now you're wondering like, oh, I did something off cam, but to clean up some of these jagged kind of edges, we're gonna go ahead and just press Alt, me on faces in tab mode, press Alt and shade smooth. Press, oops. Alt, shade smooth. You can kind of see now. Let's do the same right here. Shade smooth. We got a bit of a vertice issue. That was why. Shade smooth. And now you can kind of see our pill is looking a little bit better. So let's save just in case your stuff crashes once again. So. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and set up a camera and set up some lighting for you. So let's go ahead and double check. Let's do front. That was, I held tilde and just kind of brought that in. Now you put your camera, press G and Y, kind of bring it out. Let's right click vertical split. Let's put it right down the middle. View camera. Right there, right here. Now what I like to do with this one, I like to position it in a bit of a more fun kind of light. So what you can do is hold down shift and tilde on where you have your camera view and then WSAD and you kind of have like this like video game kind of mode here. You can see on the bottom left hand corner. Now WSAD will move you from left to right, up and down. Q and E will move you up and down. And kind of what I like to do with this one was I gave it a bit of like a slant so you can kind of see the light. If you want to make sure that you're centered, click on your camera, do viewport display. I'll crank this one up a little bit so I can kind of see. Composition guides, centered and thirds. If you're curious, I'm just going to do centered for right now. And let's just go ahead and do it right about there. Now I want to animate it as well. So let's go ahead and do the animation. And all that is going to be is a simple Z rotation. So like always to get it to loop, keyframe on zero, go to the end, 360, insert, there you go. Now we kind of have our metallic pill. Now we're going to do some stuff with the lighting. So here's where it will get Pretty, pretty functionally interesting for anyone with a bit of a lower end computer. I would suggest if you want 
maybe go back into your materials and switch out the metal maybe give it a little less reflection a little more roughness it's the reflections is what's going to cause this render to be a little bit more heavy this time around so let's make this one rendered view and let's go into our environment bring the strength all the way down and let's bring in an empty real quick i'm going to show you a little trick on the cameras and the lighting bring in an empty i'm going to call it controller and let's bring in a light area light my favorite and let's go ahead and crank it up to about 500 and with, with the light if you open up object constraints and do track 2 to your controller now when you move it so i'm going to move mine over here i'm going to duplicate it and move another one kind of like over here i'm going to duplicate it and now move one a bit underneath and you'll see it's now kind of just pretty much tracking and you don't have to do too much like repositioning or anything like that so what i did with this one i made it a little bit orange kind of like molten kind of vibe switch it to disc bring the size up a little bit let's go ahead and bring another light let's kind of oops let's bring another light and then we kind of just move it on the y in the front and I made one of these a bit of like a bluish kind of tone I'm gonna make this one kind of like kind of just bright and you can see it in place things are glaring quite a bit so if you want to kill that glare you can just let's just bring all our values kind of down to like this half kind of vibe maybe the front one you might want to bring down a bit more to get that dramatic kind of lighting you can bring the disc down a little bit and if you want to just kind of preview this our camera what we can do is just kind of go back into it I want to just subtly kind of get it to be centered. And there we go, my friend. We have a bit more of a fun kind of smiley face pill kind of thing. And now to add the finishing touches, I always like to go into the compositing effects. So what you're going to do is just make sure your render settings are kind of set up. FFmpeg make sure it's mpeg4 go ahead and be perpetually lossless set where you want it to render now let's go ahead and bring in a few things shift a viewer if you hold shift and then hold down your right click you'll bring in a reroute then let's go ahead and bring in a mix node. And I like to add a little bit of noise to my work. So open up a texture, go to clouds, set the size all the way down. Bring in a texture node, connect that texture. For anyone with like Photoshop, this is pretty much just your overlay stuff going on here. I'm gonna overlay it. I'm just gonna go ahead and render out a still image just so. What is going on, my friend? <laughs> That's what's going on. We could either overlay, multiply. Oh, we never said it. Let's go ahead and just zoom out a little bit. Um, looking at the grain. Fine tuning, you know? Sometimes you really just need to fine tune some stuff. Uh, I can get really interesting with like the color burn. Let's go ahead and just soft light it. Oh, not too much actually. It looks pretty, looks pretty gnarly. Uh, we're coming back to overlay. And then what I liked to do with this one was I really enjoyed dropping in a lens distortion just give it a bit more of a 
trippy kind of vibe. And from there, if you want to pixelate and do any other things, you can. But for now, my friend, I think this is the end of the tutorial. So let's go ahead and hit render, see what this is like. Let's chat a little bit. All right, friends, we're done. You finished. Feel free to go ahead and <clears throat> if you appreciate this, feel free to slap that like button. Subscribe if you want. Um, I release videos every, pretty much at this point is weekly. Um, I'm open to suggestions, open to recommendations, ideas that you want to see come to life. But regardless, thank you once again for dropping on in. I appreciate you and I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, evening or night. Peace out.